So the title of this morning's message is uh, when, when Faith Doesn't Pray. Anybody heard of Faith That Doesn't Pray? No. Well, then we can go home. Because that means you all have deep, long, and, uh, you know, regular prayers every day. Is that true? So what would happen right now? Who's got a smartphone? Put up your hands, the whole church. Okay. So if, if, if God could come right now, Pastor Thomas, and he would say to you, okay, let's look at your screen time for the week and compare it to your prayer time. I got you now, baby. I got you now, baby. And I'm not talking about little skit gebeurde what you do in the dark when you're in trouble and when you... I'm talking about seriously the way you surf the net the way you spend time on social media. I've got this side. Maybe the, maybe the older generation are slightly less uh, technologically advanced. We hope so. Eh? So maybe they spend more time. Guys, that's, a, that's an indictment, isn't it? Think about it. And we all start with good intentions. I do. I mean, I'm always, I'm, I'm always I'm preparing for a sermon... So I've got to go onto YouTube just to, you know, go to my favorite link so that I can check. But um, there's somebody out there, his name is uh, Satan, and he knows that I'm on the internet. And he just sends a few little things there for me. Eh? Hey Amen. Terrible. When faith doesn't pray. So this morning, it's, it's actually fun for me because I'm actually not the main event. My wife's the main event. I'm just putting on the spot. So... Um, because we're actually here this morning for um, uh, the launch. And I'm not even going to tell you about what the launch is. I want only to do it. But that's what I'm actually doing this morning. So I actually want to speak to you guys about, about prayer. And we've spoken about prayer. Um, say to the person next to you, the Lord is my shepherd. And the next three verses. Just check if he, he listened last week. I shall not want. He makes me too. I down. In green pastures, he leads me besides, he restores my soul, and he leads me down the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley, you guys must be a bit louder. Okay, my wife's very loud, because I know that. I can hear her voice between all of your voices. You're like a little baby. A baby can I, a baby, you know, a mommy can hear a baby's voice. I hear my wife's voice. So, you are this morning, so we're talking, we're actually talking about prayer when faith doesn't pray. So, let's look at the, the first scripture. We all know uh, James 5. We all, we love talking about James 5. And let's, I think those of you who brought your Bibles with, say, say congrats to the guy next to you if he brought his Bible with. And if, and if he didn't, just let him read out of yours. <laughs> Guys, I, I want to ask you something. I mean, the, you, you're going to be offended. It's okay. Say, say to the person, he's probably going to offend you now. But it's okay. We do inner healing here. I want to ask you something. If, I, if, 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 you, come to, if you come to church and I, and I preach a word and God gives you a revelation, do you think you're going to remember that revelation? Come on, those of you who have been serving the Lord for longer than five years. The answer emphatically is no. So what are you going to do if you, if you forget the revelation? So after you get your Bible, you have, you know, you, maybe you can just bring a, maybe a pen, Coke or something just to write in your Bible. You don't have to even bring something extra with. Because I know that I've sat here and I've got, I've got an amazing revelations and I get home it's like, And then, and then Satan comes, to, comes and says to you, oh, but how could it be a revelation if you forget it? But it is. So, the Bible says write the vision down. Amen. Okay, so James 5, I'm going, to read that, I'm going to read that section with you. And for those of you who were like me when I got saved, I didn't know where Galatians was the first time I went to cell, and my cell shepherd asked me to read out of Galatians. Terrible. So luckily my wife was there. I mean, didn't even know there was such a thing as Galatians. 
And what's Galatians? So then I went to Galatians. Okay, James 5. And I'll just start off a little bit before um, verse 15. Let's go to verse 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. I want you to hear the word pray. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer, and this is the part that I've got here, it's verse 15. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Verse 16, confess your trespasses to one another. So guys, uh, that's not... Um, Jere, um, ek weet, ek was lelik vandag, next to your bed, 8 o'clock to 9 uur vanavond. You, it doesn't help to confess your sins to your bed. Uh, if I, uh, if, does your Bible say the same as mine? Does it, does it say confess your sins to one another? You guys don't sound convinced? So confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And probably I should have put the scripture up. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Thanks, brother. So 2 Peter, you don't have to go there. 2 Peter is an awesome section on, um, and, and, and the reason why I'm, I'm quoting the scripture is because I think it just helps us a little bit because sometimes, you know, we think about a lot of things and I've struggled with the word faith for many years. Guys, honestly, I have, I'm going to be honest with you. Faith, because it, 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 it evolves and it becomes something um, it becomes something unnatural. It becomes something weird. You know, it's like almost like it's disconnected. Like, what is faith? But maybe this morning, I might just give you, convince you of one thing this morning, because God convinced me of one thing in preparing. Because, remember, we're talking about prayer. Okay. Now, I just want, I want to ask you something. Should I be praying more than you? Would, would you be happy if you knew or if you knew confidentially that I, I spent maybe um, 10 minutes, maybe less than an hour. No, let's go. No, let's say if I spent two hours preparing in prayer, not, not preparation, in prayer for this sermon, would you be happy? I mean, what's your expectation, guys? Pastor Thomas, what's your expectation of me for preparation to bring manna, to bring a fresh word for, of God for you? Is there an expectation that I need to spend time with him? And what is that expectation? I'm talking straight to you, eh? Because I've got an expectation of you. I mean, if I've got to spend, I don't know how many hours, in prayer, and you guys can check up on me because I'm married, well, what's my expectation from you? Or did you have a tough week? You have a tough week? Hmm? I, I, I did too. I buried my brother on Thursday morning here, right here. I had to do the sermon. I had to prepare for that sermon as well. I'm not trying to make myself... I had a tough week as well. So what's, what, 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 what can I expect from you? As my brother and my sister, prayer-wise... Prayer-wise. So let's just go to, to Peter. Look where Peter starts. He gives this awesome discourse on, on, on these tools that you need. And I'll say, by, by which he, by, this is verse 4 first, by which have been given us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these we may be partakers of the divine nature. So, so that means that when we got baptized or when we got saved, God gave us the Holy Spirit, which is a, 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 it's a, it's a little section or a, a, a part of His divine nature before we go to heaven, having accepted corruption. But also for this very, very reason, giving all diligence. Say to the person next to you, give all diligence. And then he says a very great statement. He says, add to your faith. 
And he carries on and he talks about virtue, knowledge, add to knowledge, um, uh, um, self-control, self-control, perseverance, perseverance, godliness, godliness, uh, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. And he says, for if these things are yours, you will abound and you will never be barren, nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he starts off and he says, add to your faith. Everything, guys, starts with faith. Everything starts with faith. And if you can read the Old Testament, the Old Testament doesn't actually use that word, hey. The only time that it uses is, is and the just shall live by faith. That's the only time that it, and I think that's in Zechariah, if I remember correctly. So, the word faith is not very common in the Old Testament. But in the Old Testament, the word trust is what, I mean, David keeps on saying, trust in the Lord. You know, the writer of Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will guide your path. So the word is completely different. But, but I, I think there's a progression here. Because if you get what I'm saying this morning, you will never, ever, faith will become like a, a, a sacred word for you. Because a lot of people say that I've got faith. But I want to say to you, faith is a very, very, very specific word. And the whole world can use it. And the whole world can abuse it. But you and I, brother and sister of God, are only allowed to use it when it comes to a certain thing. And it, com it comes to when we talk to each other about what we want to talk to each other. So I want to qualify this word this morning, this faith word. Because if you think about it, faith that doesn't pray. And now I'm, I just want, to have, I want us to have a look at the scripture. It's in John, and it's, it's once again, it's Jesus. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, okay, I'm just going to put that up there. So believeth on me is the word faith, okay. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, this is a promise that God gives us, he shall do also. And not even that, he gives us an even bigger promise, okay, and greater works than these shall he do. Because I go to my father. You guys don't look that impressed with that. Is that your experience? Are you doing greater works than Jesus Christ? So, well, we've got a choice here, guys. Either he's a liar. You know, either the problem is with Jesus or the problem is with us. And greater works than these, yourself, because I go to my Father. And say to the person you whatsoever. For the, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an English word. I know that we don't all understand that word that well. I don't even understand it that well, and I am English. Whatsoever. What's the Afrikaans? Watwakal. Alles. That's a nice word, Pastor. Thanks for that translation. So, what are we allowed to ask? What do we allow to ask the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer? Everything. Everything, guys. Remember, he, said, he says here that greater things, you're going to do the same as me, but you're going to do greater things. And whatsoever you ask, you shall ask in my name. That means in the name of Jesus Christ. What have we got? We've got a guarantee there. It says, I will do. I just want to see that. If it comes up, I don't even know if I put that in yet. Yeah, I did. That the Father may be glorified and um, may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Who of you are living that out? Who, who of you say that that is the truth in my life? If, I, if you say the answer is no, then, then, then obviously the next question is just why not? And I'm going to tell you now. Who of you have got faith? Okay, who doesn't have faith? Anybody here doesn't have faith? Okay. If somebody has faith, and I mean, that we'll, we'll read the next scripture, but if, if we have faith, what is that going to do to our prayer life. 
I mean, if you believe that whatsoever you ask Him in the name of Jesus Christ, He will do it. That's not, that's not a, I mean, that's not a, yeah, no. Ach, here, thank you. Lord, thank you for everything. As my son always prays, thank you, Lord, that we have, we have a, maybe we have a lacquer day tomorrow and everything's going to be lacquer. You know? I mean, so I hope that he has a lack of day, but do you, do you agree with me? That's not specific enough. What can God do with that prayer? What can God do when I come to him and ask him, you know, non-specifically? Who of you have been in the position in the last 10 years that you've been serving the Lord and you've, had to, you've felt like you're starting to make excuses for him? You're starting to pray, maybe not so specifically. Now, maybe. But, but listen, guys, if we want to sell this, this thing, if we want to sell this whole gig that we're doing, we've either got to believe him or we, we're not going to believe him. I can tell you now that I think our faith level is very low, and I'll tell you why. Because, I mean, let's be honest, when we call a prayer meeting, how many people come? How many people come to pre-prayer? How many of you should have been a pre-prayer? Don't put up your hand. You know what I'm saying? So, so if we believe that whatsoever we shall ask... In his name, he will do it. We would have been, I mean, every area in this church will say, nee, 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 this may be at for voorbereiding. No, 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 uh, Pastor G, we'll do, we'll do pre-prayer because, yes, man, we just get everything we ask for. Every time we pray, it's just like God is like, just saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're getting caught out this morning because we, we think God might answer our prayer. Actually, with a clamor. Of the Lord has slept. Well, my, my, my daughter just gave. So I, a lot of you have already yawned, but I couldn't say that. I could say it to her. <laughs> Praise God. That's just a. Well, she says I didn't make coffee for her. Okay. Because I want to. I just want to say something to you before we carry on. Faith. Okay is not an abstract belief in the Word of God. It's not a mere mental credence nor a simple ascent of understanding. It's not a passive acceptance of facts. Okay? Forget about the... Let's talk. Hebrews 11 is the, is the chapter on faith. Okay? We all know what's the definition of faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Okay, so we've got two words that we've got a problem with now. Okay, so if I, I would just like to ask this casually to each one of you. Did people this week that were in your presence, did they see your faith? Every time I ask a question, you guys go, Droof. did they see your faith this week? Because if, if, I mean, either this stuff is, is, is nonsense or it's true. Faith is the substance. What is the substance of things hoped for? The evidence. What evidence do, does, do I see that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? That Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world? What, what evidence is there in my daily walk that somebody else can see that I truly believe that Jesus is who He says He is? That He comes and that He is a miracle worker? Where is that evidence? So can you see now we're starting to qualify what the word faith means? Faith deals with God and God alone. Faith has got nothing to do with the Muslims. It's got nothing to do with anything other than the God of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you talk about faith, this Bible in the New Testament has the patent right on the word faith. Full stop. I don't care what anybody says. Nobody can use that word other than a born-again Christian. Why? Because nobody else knows what the word faith is. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith deals with only with God. Faith 
can only deal with the Word of God. Whatever is written down in the Word is the substance of whatever there is evidence for me to believe. There is nothing else that I can put my hand on. There is nothing. That word upostasi means something. The substance of what I'm hoping for. So what are we hoping for? Family of God, this morning, what do we have faith for? What does the world outside see in your life every single day? Let me even get even a bit more personal. Does God the Father see your faith when you come every morning to seek His face, to pray? If I... If I get born again, what is the evidence that I've been born from above? Yes, there's fruit. I, I no longer, I hate the sin that I once loved. I hate all the things that I did to other people. I feel despicable about what a pathetic piece of work I am. I feel, I, I'm like a worm. So, so there's this component but I can't walk around every day telling everybody what, what a pathetic piece of work I am. You know, like, like Paul said, I'm, I'm the chief of all sinners. So what, what evidence is there of this substance? What evidence is there of me being born again? What happens to me when I start living as a new spirit? I would submit to you this morning that the, the very life of a born-again believer is the prayer that he prays. The very life of a, a life in the Spirit is the amount of time that he spends praying to and with and in the presence of Holy Spirit. I believe that with my whole heart. And there are many of you sitting here this morning and you look like Ethiopians because your spirit man is almost dead. But Jesus says, ha, he says that a, a smoldering flax I will not quench and a bruised reed I will not break. I will not cry out. I will declare justice to the Gentiles. Isaiah 42. That's Isaiah prophesying about the Messiah, the Son of God, when He's going to come. And I want to say to you this morning, child of God, are you, are you an Ethiopian? Is your spirit man all but dead? Or is there a dynamic prayer life that you can't wait you can't wait because you know that every time you close your eyes, every time you go on your knees and you start praying, heaven listens. Heaven listens. And all of a sudden in that whichever room that I'm in, be it a study, be it whatever, all of a sudden the atmosphere changes. And I don't understand what it is because my, the Bible says that uh, the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit because they are spiritually discerned. And I'm sitting there and I'm praying in the Spirit and all of a sudden something starts to change in my heart. You see, I know something's happening in your heart right now because I prayed for you this morning and I prayed for you yesterday and I prayed for you the day before and I had, I've got an expectation. There is, ev there is evidence there is evidence in my life that you are going to believe what I'm telling you this morning and it's going to change your prayer life forever. Because God's going to answer your prayer. Because you're not going to get lied to anymore by Satan. You're not going to get cajoled. You know why? Faith is like love. You know what? Faith is like love, guys. Love never fails. Faith never fails. Faith never fails. Abraham, Moses, all of the heroes of our faith, they never received what they were hoping for. They never saw what they were praying for, but they died in faith. Yara, verwacht dit van ons? Are you expecting that from us, Lord? Are we, are, you mean we're going we're gonna to pray? But Lord, how can I, how can I remind you every day because Satan says to me, if I keep reminding you every day about what you said and, and what your promises are, you, you, you know, Satan keeps telling me that, that I, need, I mustn't remind you again because I'm in unbelief. There's only one reason why you don't pray. It's because you don't believe God. Simple. If you believe God, 
If you believe Him, if you believe His promises, you will make time every single day of your life to pray. And I'm not talking about a shopping list, guys. You weren't saved for your shopping list. Your shopping list is from your wife when you go to the shopping center. That was a joke. But somebody else over there laughed. I think you see guys a little bit serious. Every time I close my eyes, every time I start praying, every time I seek his face, something starts to happen inside of me. The kingdom of God becomes a reality. God can work with me. God can start to change me. I can't change you on a Sunday morning, guys. I can pray. I can, I can give you all the scripture. I can quote every single scripture here. Verily, verily, I say, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou taken up and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, whatever he, whatever he saith come to pass, he shall have it. Therefore, I say unto you, all things, uh -huh, all things, whatsoever ye pray and ask for, believe that ye receive and you shall have them. There's a, those are two scriptures that you have to remember for the rest of eternity. Are they going to change your prayer life? Do you really believe that God wants to bless you? Do you really believe that God wants to answer you? Do you really believe that He's going to? Well, He does, but I've got, some, I've, got some, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. There's a problem with faith, guys. It seems to me repeatedly in the New Testament, it's going to be tested. It's going to be tested. God is going to look and see if you really believe Him. And so there's going to come a time where all hell is going to break through in your life. And it's going to look like everything has gone to hell in a handbasket. It's going to look like everything that you've built up has just disappeared. Everything. Your marriage, your finances, your children, your work, your job, everything. It's going to look like it's, Lord, what happened? And all God is saying to you, do you believe me? Or do you believe your circumstances? Do you believe what my word says? And that's what he's doing, guys. He's, he's just testing your faith. He's just seeing, is your faith really from God? And I'm afraid at the moment. Because Jesus said, he said, when I come back, will I find any real faith in this earth? And I mean, he's, you know, his expectation is low. He said, if you've got faith like a mustard seed. Faith like a mustard seed. Guys, I know there, there are people among you that are sitting here today that are prayer warriors. There are people sitting here that are absolutely prayer intercessors. God has called you to intercede. But I can tell you now, my spiritual gift is not prayer. But I'm becoming a prayer warrior. Because I'm convinced, and you're never going to convince me otherwise, that the only way to shift people, the only way to shift the dark forces of the demonic is through prayer. And, the, and, and persistent, the fervent prayer of the righteous will, av will avail much. Elijah was a man like us, and he prayed, and it didn't rain for three and a half years. If God can find one man in this congregation, if you can find one woman in this congregation that is prepared to take him at his word and to pray for the rest of this year, there is going to be a shift in the spirit. There is going to be a change in the atmosphere. There is going to be a revival in your heart. You don't pray for the world. You don't pray for everything else. You pray that God will revive you. Because prayer is breath. Prayer is breathing. Prayer is salvation. Guys, you don't get saved because you prayed a prayer 10 years ago. You get saved because you wake up every morning and you say, Lord, you've got to come. You've got to come. You've got to come this morning because I don't feel like going to work. I don't feel like being nice to people. I don't feel like being a Christian. I don't feel like giving my life away. I don't feel like offering up my life to everything and everyone. I want to, sell, I want to do things on my own. And I get on my knees and I say, Lord, you've got to come now. You, please, you've got to come. And I tell you something, when I'm finished praying, I still don't feel better. But somewhere from walking down those stairs...
to getting into, into my car and to doing something, something happens. I cannot explain this to you. I mean, yesterday afternoon, I prayed for f- two, three hours before I went to work at nine o'clock. And I prayed and I prayed like all of you. I said, Yo, here, gebruik my vandag. Asseblief. Ek gebruik nie until 12 o'clock. But guess what? The person rocks up at 12. <laughs> all the way from Rudapwit. And I wasn't nice. Initially. But 45 minutes later, my heart's breaking. My heart's breaking. I repent. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I prayed this morning that you'd use me. You send me somebody all the way from, from, I mean, 50 kilometers away. She comes to see me. Just for a word, man. Yeah, but I bet you're going to break me. I pray, Lord, use me. Just only when it suits me. You know? I mean, I've got to go and prepare for today. <laughs> and I can't. I want you to just read the scripture with me. And uh, then we're going to do the activation. This is Paul. And. Uh, Paul's talking about the difference between uh, godly repentance and worldly repentance. And this, guys, is, I hope that what I've said to you this morning will have this effect on your prayer life. For observe this very thing that you sorrowed in a godly, because Paul had written in 1 Corinthians, he'd given them a little bit of uh, uh, correction. And uh, Paul then sa- this says, um, he says, for observe this very thing that you sorrowed in a godly way, And what diligence it produced in you. What clearing of yourself. What indignation. What fear. What vehement desire. And zeal. And vindication. In all things. You proved yourselves to be clear in this matter. So my prayer this morning is. Before Hanley um, um, does the activation. Because the activation is, is about prayer guys. Is that you would repent. Repent about the fact that you're not really trusting God. Repent about the fact that God has to fit into your schedule and you not into His. Repent about the fact that you are lukewarm because on fire Christians, sorry, they pray. They pray all day. They pray every day. I mean, Smith Wigglesworth said he only prayed for a half an hour at a time, but he never went more than a half an hour without praying. So he basically prayed the whole, day, the whole day. And I mean, he just prayed in the Spirit. He prayed, people would come and see him from very, very far away, and they'd come into his office, and he would stop in mid-sentence and say, just hold on, let's pray. How many of you have done that? Um, I mean, just picture me. My wife, sorry, or my wife, I'm not so big. I don't know if you have problem. Look, we'll sort out your problem now. I just want to pray first. I mean, I think that person who just walked out there, this oak is nuts, please just give me my consultation feedback and, you know. I mean, think about it, guys. It's crazy. But we, the Bible says that we are a peculiar and, and a weird people. We're a holy nation. Amen. Amen. So I, I just, my, my whole um, expectation of God when I prayed is that, that each one of us would say, yes, I I'm going to put God first, and I'm going to take responsibility. Guys, I want to tell you something. I don't want to give you a, a false expectation. When you start praying regularly, God doesn't just show up the first night and say, you know, and all of a sudden it's, uh, it's fireworks, and you know, you, 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 you say in the glory you don't want to go to bed. It doesn't happen that way. Because he says in his word, he says, Without faith it is impossible to please me, but those who come to me must believe that I am and that I am a rewarder of those who seek me diligently. See, that word diligence is, is, is everywhere. And diligence means that we seek him diligently. What does that mean? That means that we seek him every single waking moment of every single day, that we cannot stop because the love of Christ compels us that if one died, then all died, and we die to ourselves. And so this morning, guys, 
I want you to repent. I want you to change your way of looking at prayer. I want you to, to think to yourself, you are not praying to satisfy some God that wants you to, 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 to bring an ode to Him or to bring Him some sort of a worship. No, but that you as, as a born-again Christian, if you do not pray, you will die. If you live in the flesh, you will die. But if you, by the Spirit, put to death the works of the flesh, you will live. Romans 8. Because as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Just, uh, just bow your heads right now. Thank you, Lord. I want you to raise your hand if you're not happy with your prayer life. And I'll be honest now, don't, I mean, forget about this, nobody looking at you. It's, it's you and God. And just softly, I just want you to whisper to him. I just want you to talk to him. He's, if you're born again, he's inside you. His Holy Spirit is inside you. I want you to talk to him and just ask him what he wants you. You can put your hands down. What he wants you to do about the conviction if you've got a piece of paper, write something down. And it's yours. It's not for anybody else. If you don't have something, try and remember it. Ask Holy Spirit to, to make you remember that. Amen. And if you finish talking to the Lord,